At least it's not at the end of it all, it's just coming back to you. Sorry, uh, sorry, that's, that's, I'm put off by the not, you're not doing the time. Three, the program. Yeah, two, okay. one, action. Okay, so uh, for this presentation I'm going to be talking about a few works uh, by um, Godfrey Reggio, and this is a man who in his lifetime um, has uh, stood in 14 years uh, as a monk, and has become a fire monk and has been helping the poor of the poor. Um, and it's interesting that that, um, sort of that sort of reflection sort of his, uh, his work, um, he's, mo he's most known for uh, this uh, Kasi trilogy, um, which are said to be uh, essays of visual images and sound by chronicles of destruction, um, it, the destructive impact of modern worlds on the environment. And for this presentation, I'm just going to talk about uh, Kleanne Kasi and Fire Kasi. Um, and the, ka uh, the name of them come from this um, language of the Hopi language, I think it's Hope, Hopi or Hope, maybe it's something like that. Um, and the name of the uh, Laika the Brahmins, here's the, uh, the uh, Kleanne Kasi names. Um, Now, for a, a historical context for uh, Kleon Scotty, uh, what we have is that there's this uh, building called uh, Fujigo, and this was um, uh, an estate uh, which was uh, 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 built in the 1950s, but then uh, during the 60s it was influenced for poverty, crime, and racial segregation. Um, and so, on the time they, they, they just uh, got rid of it. Um, things that was filmed for uh, this uh, for this documentary and so um, you can see a couple of times actually in terms of different kind of weather uh, going on um, and so you can see the different impacts. Um, uh, as when it comes to the modes of the documentary and um, I'd say that the main modes in these two documentaries would be poetic because um, it's sort of uh, unconventional in that it's um, purely uh, visual and music um, to help um, uh, convey the essence of the documentary. But um, I would say that it's also, um, uh, it has observational on it, and that's, that's mo mostly ob observational because um, we see, um, I don't know, it's observing, say in, in Koyan Scotty's case, it's um, um, observing um, uh, nature sort of different environments and things like that. In the case of uh, Power Cassie, um, but I think that there are certain moments in both of them where maybe it's a bit sort of set up. Um, I don't know, like I think in sort of these two here, I, I could imagine that like uh, with them looking at the camera, uh, I think there are a couple of times when you have that, um, where, the, where the people are looking at the camera. I'm thinking of probably the people who told them to do that. And then you have this shot here, which is a really long uh, um, tape uh, of people looking at a screen, and I might be wrong, but I'm thinking probably that was sort of they asked them to do it. Like that's the kind of language people ask to be um, stood there for, for, for that long. But um, I mean, point is that there are moments of observing that are present. Um, when it comes to the structure of Kayan's Kasi, um, it opens with these um, uh, paintings, uh, cave paintings, and uh, Horseshoe Canyon in Utah, um, and it also ends with these, uh, um, it also starts with an explosion, and it ends with an explosion, so they uh, just sort of come back, and the same thing sort of happens with that class, and this thing here, this is in its first scene, uh, there are these workers, and one of the things you see is the, this uh, one worker, worker who seems to be injured, and you can see him carrying uh, the person along, um, and that person, uh, in the very last it would be the very last image of Kalakasi. Uh, it sort of comes back in a sort of a fade um, in some, in, some uh, in, a, in a river. And I, I suppose kind of the point in that kind of is, is sort of saying that like maybe sort of the, uh, if the picture has changed, maybe sort of it's kind of, it's still there, sort of the stuff at the beginning, maybe. This is uh, just my way of looking at it. Um, <coughs> Uh, now, when it comes to the visual style, um, there is uh, of Koyan's Kasi, uh, time lapse is used, um, lots of um, fast forward stuff is used um, uh, when it comes to showing people in in the film. Um, but there are moments uh, when 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 it's slowed down, 
Um, there's also a bit of a thing here I noticed, uh, this is sort of a recurring motif of, you see these colors uh, that, crop, that are cropping up, and this stuff with these flowers, they crop up sort of early on. Is that is it already there? Okay. Um, so they are uh, crop up going, don't worry. Uh, early, early on in, in the movie, and then the same sort of colors, they come up a, a couple of times again, and saying that maybe that bit of nature is still there somewhere, even though um, sort of in some way, um, uh, society keeps maybe being sort of more separated from it. Um, and I just want to show, uh, uh, hopefully you can see to the right one, which does a certain uh, mm -hmm. shape. much before then the sort of the flood tide is really um, being fairly still and then suddenly there's this uh, kind of fast coming out of the sea um, sort of making its way to the flood. Um, and then we uh, have uh, Fast Fest which is another uh, crew here and this uh, there's a bit actually uh, so we have um, this stuff here there's there, there's a sequence here where you can see Sort of certain people in, in the street, it doesn't actually look like they've existed for years or anything. Um, but you have uh, certain people sitting in the streets and you have um, people walking about, but they seem to be sort of like faded in a way. And kind of like uh, my interpretation of that, it seems to be kind of a bit all like maybe they're not supposed to be there in a way, like it's not sort of their natural sort of environment, I, I, I suppose. Um, 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 so whereas in, we, we saw uh, people in uh, Koyama's proxy, and um, for the most part, you see them uh, and they're uh, sped up. Uh, all of the uh, people in this, they're, uh, they're shown uh, in slow motion or just in sort of regular time. Um, but there are just a couple of moments, maybe this is one, there's one bit with a train where it goes really, by, uh, really fast. Uh, by and uh, I think I think that the scene might have been edited as well. Uh, sort of like the sort of the, the train goes by and then it sort of uh, he cuts it to make it put a really really long train. I thought that was quite nice. Um, <coughs> um, So, um, uh, and, and the message uh, um, I've uh, learned from Christopher Holm, um, Kayan, is to show that we've uh, sort of encased ourselves um, in sort of maybe an artificial environment that's drawn out uh, very well in this sort of sequence, which is like going through a scene of uh, sort of um, a very sped up thing, but it might have gone on for sort of something like at least that quick in that sort of quick scene. Um, and this were work. And then, when it comes to power fantasy, uh, I think really it's kind of just an observation of this uh, uh, different cultures, and kind of maybe also to show that um, maybe cult that. Uh, well, I suppose what you see in the movie is um, uh, cultures living a sim simple life, and then there's a, a certain point in the movie where you, where you're, you're, you see uh, some uh, advertising. Uh, coming up uh, from uh, the Western world and sort of how people sort of um, replicate themselves off of these, uh, uh, off the television and, and things like that. And then it, it, it comes to showing the um, the Eastern side, of, but then they're not so, they're not, I wouldn't say this is really the primitive sort of way anymore, they, sort of, they still have the, the sort of more advanced technology and things like this. Um, and so it's, that would be all I have to say about that. Uh,
Okay, um, Thomas, uh, that's really good, really excellent. Um, what we got there was some of his own interpretation of the film and describing um, particular scenes and using them to illustrate his points, which was really well done. Um, really good. I don't know the film, so, you know, but in saying that, uh, you've engaged me enough to want to watch them. And, um, yeah, again, you did what Tony did. You compared the two all along. Um, but really good insight and understanding of... Um, these films that are particularly poetic, I think, in nature, and you know, need a lot of kind of artistic interpretation, and you've done that um, as much as I can do, as I haven't seen them, but um, yeah, excellent. I think that was really good and very engaging and clear that you, yeah, you know, there's something you're very interested in. So yeah, very good. Yeah, great. Thank you. Yeah.